I hold you long. This morning, if you have your Bible, your app, if you could turn with me to the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, starting at chapter 16, Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, starting at chapter 16, and I will be reading from the New Living Translation. I say it's always good to see the president, uh, Ms. Catherine Wilson, in the house, so, you know, I it tickles my heart every time I see her. I see it. Excellent, excellent. First Samuel chapter 16, starting at verse 1. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel, so fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you, the Lord replied, and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong, they asked, do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel replied, I, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. When they arrived, Samuel took one, of, took one look at Eliab and thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shema. But Samuel said, neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? Mm -hmm. There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. May the Lord bless him to the reading of this holy word for just a few moments, my brothers and sisters. I want to put a tag on that text and preach from the topic. This is your season. All right. Amen. This is your season. Can you just do me a favor? Can you just look at a neighbor and say, neighbor? Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. This is your season. This is your season. Find another neighbor. Find another neighbor who will get excited and delighted with the words you're about to prophesy. I say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Get ready. Get yes. ready. This is your season. This is your season. Amen. This is your season. My brothers and sisters, can we all be honest for a second and say that there is no fun and excitement in rejection? That's right. I don't care how holy you are, how much scripture you can quote, how many songs you sing, mm -hmm. how many times you've been to church, how many Bible studies you've attended, how many meetings you've gone through. Rejection is never a fun thing. No, sir. You can play by the rules and do everything right. You can smile and we say in the church, you can come to church, pay your tithes and offers. You can do everything right and still get rejected. Amen. Am I talking to somebody now right. that you understand this whole concept of saying, you know what, I've been rejected at some things in my life and in a real sense, the more I've got, the more I face rejection, the more I've even questioned myself and sometimes I've questioned God in the process. 
because I don't care how many times you pray to God, how many times you lift up holy hands and prayer, there will be there will come times in your life whereby you will face this thing called rejection. That's right. I don't care who you are. You could be the president or you could be a school teacher. You could be a hot, no matter how old or how young you are, you will always face something called rejection. That's right. How many of you have faced rejection on your job? You were, yes, you, someone took your promotion, someone got a raise, you knew you were more educated, more qualified, and more experienced, but all of a sudden when it came down for a promotion, you got overlooked and you felt rejected. How did you feel? Did you feel that you were used and abused? Am I talking to somebody right now? Mm -hmm. That you were rejected and you said, wait a minute, I know I got more going on than this person who got promoted and I feel rejected. It's not not fair, it's not right, but you still had to live on another day. Well, some of you probably didn't get rejected and at work. Maybe you got rejected in school. You know, you tried to do everything right. I got educated. Said, how many kids came to you and said, teacher, I did A work, but you're giving me a B grade. Maybe they went so far and said, you know what? Maybe I'm doing the best I'm, I can, but yet I'm still going to summer school. I don't know about you. I had to face that reality back in my high school days. I'm doing the best that I can, but yet you still feel me. That's a sign of rejection. Well, maybe you didn't, didn't get rejected on your job. Maybe you didn't get rejected at school. Perhaps you got rejected in a relationship, you know. And many of us have gone through a relationship whereby we tried to love the person. We tried to do the right thing, but for some reason, they did not love us in return. Am I just dealing by myself Great, this preacher. morning, or do I have a witness say, preach on, preacher, because I tried I to love people in the past, but for yes, some sir. reason, the more I love them, it seems as though that they rejected my yes, love, and next thing you know, they dumped me, they left me by myself, but all of a sudden, I thank God that they yes. did leave me, because if they didn't leave me, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Yes. I think mean, I can testify to somebody right yes. now, right now, because somebody's been rejected, somebody's been dumped, and because you got dumped by somebody, then God opened up a door and blessed yes, you right now. Yes, and every now and again, that's why I always yeah. tell Kim, every now and again, you got to write a letter to your haters and say, thank you so much for letting me go. Thank you so much for dumping me because if you didn't dump me, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So I yeah, cried yeah. in the beginning, but now I'm rejoicing. Really? Why? Because your rejection made room for my elevation. Who yeah. am I talking yeah. to right yeah. now? Yeah. That because you rejected me, you dumped me back then. Yeah. I went through my sorrows and I went through my tears, but then I had God on the inside yes. that says, pick yourself up. Yes. They may have left you, but I will never leave you, oh, nor yes. forsake you. Yes. And I'm here to let you know that, you know what, every now and again, you will go through some rejection, yes. but don't worry about it. You're going to be all right. And I have, need to help you understand this because it is football season, Mr. Wilson. And even though I'm not an Atlanta Falcons fan, I can't, I believe I can help everybody relate to the story about this quarterback. They call him the greatest of all time. He used to play for that team up north called the New England Patriots, but now he plays down south for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know who I'm talking about. Yes, that Michigan graduate, that man named Tom Brady. You know Tom Brady, who I believe has what, seven Super Bowls, but before Tom Brady became the greatest, he was drafted number 199 out of his, out of his draft class. Can you imagine that? How can the greatest of all time Dr. Williams, be selected dead last. Isn't that a sign of rejection? He's the starter, or he was the starter of the University of Michigan. They said he has good skills, he has good leadership, not only on the field, but off the field. But when it comes to drafting, 198 people were drafted ahead of him. And isn't it amazing that those 198 people drafted ahead of him are not titled the GOAT? Mm, yeah. Let me say that again. Yeah. Can you imagine how you can be rejected by so many people, yeah. but yet those people who were elevated above you are not 
title to go. But Tom, can you imagine Tom for a second? He must be sitting in the room with his family. He's aggravated and agitated because he says, wait a minute, I played for the University of Michigan. It's draft day, Chief, and I know I'm better than a whole lot of people that's been drafted ahead of me. Can I stop right there? Uh -huh. Have you ever felt like that? That oh, yeah. people have been elevated. God has blessed so many people. Yeah. And you're saying, wait a minute, I know I'm a better Christian than they are. Oh, yeah. I know I'm a better person than they are. But yet they got the blessing and I'm still left here rejected. I don't care how holy you are. You can feel miserable at times. Because when you see people who are not doing right, yeah. not living right, and yet they get the blessing yeah. and we're left frustrated, we're left agitated, we're left asking God questions saying, God, what about me? Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking Great to, job. but Tom Brady is probably saying the same thing. Say, you know, I'm better than a lot of these people, but here it is, I'm past. When he got to the league, he didn't even start. Can you imagine yeah. that? He knows that he's better than a lot of people, but he didn't even start. As a matter of fact, he was riding the bench, but guess what? He decided he had to come into the game because the starter got hurt, and then the Lord whispered down to Tom and said, Tom, Tom, this is your time. Don't blow. I need to stop right there. When God opens up an opportunity for you, he whispers, this is your time. Don't blow it. I made a way out of no way for you. And because I made a way out of no way for you, this is your time. Don't blow it. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep your eyes forward because this is your season and this is your time. Who am I talking to right now? You're in the stage of preparation. And because you're in a stage of preparation, I need to let you know this is your season and this is your time. Well, you're not feeling Tom Brady right now. I know somebody who has a great story. That man named King David. Yeah, we read the story about David. David said, before I became a king, I was just a young boy out in the field working. I was minding my business and the Bible lets us know that King Saul messed up. King Saul, who was chosen by God, but in the essence, as Dr. Williams will back me up, the people wanted Saul because the people wanted a king like everybody yeah, yeah. else. God was already leading them and guiding them, but they had their eyes on other people, uh -huh. and they wanted to be like other people, uh -huh. and they told the prophet Samuel, Samuel, we want a king, well, and I'm here to let you know we got to be careful that we don't try to follow the footsteps of other people, yeah. because when we follow the footsteps of other people, yeah. we will get what we really don't need. Well, when God is leading you, when God is you, it's best to say, okay, God, you in the driver's seat, just keep on going, yeah. keep on doing what you're doing. Order my steps. I don't need to be like everybody else. Right, right, right. I don't need to follow everybody's right. game plan. All I need to do is follow God's plan. But we find here that Samuel has now selected Saul. And Saul was doing this thing for a while, but then Saul messed up. Y'all can read the story. Great, Saul great, messed great, up great, because great. Saul went and gave an illegal offering. Saul was not a prophet right. at the time, nor did he have priestly duty. He was simply a king. And because of that, he was not supposed to make an offering. And because he made an offering, God said, hold on for a second. So I'm now going to tear down your kingdom. Right. But the Bible offers also says that when God told Saul to go ahead and destroy the Amalekites, that Saul said, you know what, I'm going to destroy them, but yeah, I'm going to spare the king, and then I'm going to have my homeboys take the good stuff, but we're going to destroy everything else. Hold on for a second, Saul. You did not follow God's instructions. God told you what to do, but you let your eyes deceive you, and you allow other people to direct you. I need to say that again. He let his eyes deceive him, and other people trick him, and we got we got to be very careful who we're following. Yeah. We got to be very careful the people that whisper in our ear. Yeah, right, but then right. God said, you know, I got to find a man after my own heart. Yeah. So he told Samuel, Samuel, go ahead and go down and anoint a king. And I love it when he, because the first thing that the Bible says that God told Samuel, Samuel, stop mourning. Well, yeah, yeah. Stop mourning because Saul was the king. Yeah. It's time for you to stop mourning mm -hmm. because the more you mourn, the more time you take away from doing what I need you to do. Right. And I'm here to let you know, many of us are still mourning of our past. Well. 
The past is in is like that. It's simply in the past. Yeah. And then what the Bible says that Samuel had to go to Jesse's house, and then God gave him the instruction. Then I like what David said. David said, Sinclair, go ahead and tell him how was this in the field, how all my brothers were presented before me. How be my older brother, how he looked good. And yes, he got he was gonna get chosen because he looked good, really? because his look was supposed to give him the leadership. Really? Run. I need to stop right there. Really? Looks won't get your leadership. Really? This was in your heart that gets yeah, your leadership. Yeah, yeah. And then all the brothers are going in front of David. But then say, then Jesse, can you imagine Jesse for a second? Jesse got all his sons. He's bringing son one and son two to everybody. And then it took Samuel and said, hold on, Jesse. Uh, don't you got any other children? Jesse forgot about David. Mm -hmm. I'm not. That 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 can can we be that's jacked up. It is. You got a family member that forgot about you. Everybody been invited to the party except you. Everybody's been counted except you. You're out in the field doing what you're supposed to do, and yet when it comes time for a blessing. You're forgotten about yeah, yeah. But I'm so thankful that God had the prophet say, you know what, Jesse? Are these all your sons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesse said, no, nah, I got one out there. He's out in the field. But And it says, go get him because the party can't get started. Well. Until he comes. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, somebody just missed your shout. The party can't get started yeah. until David comes from doing what David was supposed to do and coming to the house. In other words, the party can't get started until you come here from doing all that God has called you to do. You've been faithful over a few things. And because you've been faithful over a few things, it's time for you to get your promotion. I right, you missed your shout right there. As long as you're doing what God has called you to do. The the party can't get started until you come and give it to God. And when God calls your name, it's time for a new season. Because the Bible says that David was out there. He was keeping sheep and goats and water. But, but guess what? He's about to get an upgrade. Oh, I like that right there. See, I'm in church. I can't say Beyonce. What? Let me upgrade you for a second. Right? Because it's time for an upgrade. You were out in the field, but now I'm going to put you in the palace. Mm, that's a good start right there. That's a new season. You were out there keeping sheep and goats, and then I'm gonna have you control and have lead men, and then I'm gonna give you all the riches and glory. And now, here's my word, Kim. I'm gonna make you prosperous because of your obedience, because you've been doing the right thing by your family, because you've been doing the right thing in your field, and you've been by been rejected by so many. Guess what, baby? This is your new season. <laughs> Uh, I'm loving that. You want to look at somebody and say, I've been rejected, but this is my new season. <laughs> and because this is your new season, we need to understand two things. So somebody said, Preacher, how is this my new season? Glad you asked. Here's the first you need to understand. The Bible lets us know that age and circumstances will not prohibit what God has for you. Uh, I'm loving that right there. Age nor circumstance will prohibit what God has for you. In other words, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. As long as you're faithful to God, God will make ways out of no oh, ways yeah. for you. All you got to do is open up your mind and hear a word from God. All you got to do is open up your heart and say, use me, Lord. I'm ready to be used. So age nor circumstance will, that will stop what God has for you. Okay, you missed it. Let me help you out. I believe it was, uh, who's the bully with it? Abraham, who was a hundred years old, a hundred years old, Abel said, Lord, I don't have a son. A hundred year old man and a 90 year old woman just ain't gonna work. Am I right? It's, it's, it's not going to work according to man. But God said, you know, I'm going to do the impossible. Uh -huh. So I like where Abel, Abel was 100 years old and still used by God. Yeah. Okay, you missed Abel. I believe Moses. Moses, 80 years old. You know Moses, the murderer. Moses who killed somebody. Moses was the one who was running from God. Moses up on a burning bush at 80 years old. And yet God used Moses at 80 years old yeah. to be the lawgiver and liberator. Why? It doesn't matter. 
systematic age or social status. Okay, you didn't like Abraham, you didn't like, well, what about Martin Luther King Jr., a 26-year-old preacher who helped lead the Montgomery bus boycott. Why? Because he had a hookup with Almighty God. Age or social status can matter when God is on your side. And because you didn't like, you didn't like Abram, uh, Moses, or MLK. Look, come on, let's talk about Mary, the virgin mother of God. Mary, who was 12 years old, didn't know a man, but because she was obedient to God, God said, Mary, this is your season. I don't care what man said. It's all about what God said. And I need to talk to somebody right now. You may be going through something in your life right now. I don't care how old you are. I don't care your social status. I don't care where you live or what you're going through. If you just make yourself available to God, then God can turn your life around. Not just a three but in a 180. Why? Because I serve a God that never fails. I serve a God that has a record from Genesis to Revelation that can use anybody and everybody to accomplish His will. All we got to do is position ourselves to be used by God. The second thing I'm loving it, and here's the second thing this gets my shout on, Chief, is that. God does not need other people's permission well, to use you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason why this is my new season uh -huh. is that God does not need permission yeah. from anybody yeah. to use you. Okay, okay, okay. I need to make it more personal. You got sometimes you gotta tell people, I don't need your permission. Uh -huh. To be used by God. When it's your season, yeah. the enemy will always try to attack you. Uh -huh. But every now and again, you've got to say, I don't need your permission yeah. to be blessed. Yeah. I don't need your permission to be anointed. I don't need your permission right. to be called. Yeah. Why? Because I serve a God yeah. that calls me. And when he calls me, uh -huh. All I do is say a simple word. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Say yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Because he does not need permission Amen. to yes. call you. Yes. Right. Now, can we just be honest for a second? Can you imagine if God, if God needed permission, if he went back over our whole life, how many people he would talk about? Well, we talk to, and do we have people in our lives that would not give us the most glowing report? That's right. Yes, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got, I got a situation here. Let me, let me, let me make this more personal. Help me. I, I'm a business trainer, and I'm good at what I do. I'm not sounding cocky. I'm sounding confident, Mister. I'm good at what I do. And, and I had a client, and I was working with this client for some time. And after I finished with this client, I said, you know, I'm done. I got tired of all of the nonsense. I said, I'm done. You know, I've done the best that I could do. Mm -hmm. Now I was getting all of these glowing reports, Chief. I was like, you saved my company millions, Doc. You helped me do this. You helped me do that. But for some reason, when I said we're going to put it into it, would you believe this client had the unmitigated audacity to go on Google review and then gave me two one stars? <laughs> I was at five. I got two one stars, one from her and one from her husband. <laughs> now, now, she, now, now, here's the thing, sister. She copied and pasted what she did for herself and put it on her husband's account. And, and, and it got so, and, you know, Kim was like, uh, why don't you call her husband? Because I know her husband didn't read. I said, no, nah, I'm going to let it go. Mm -hmm. I, I started stirring it up for a little bit. And I said, you know what? I'm upset with this. So I went to Google and I said, report spam. Report spam. And within 24 hours, Google said, we reviewed your account, Mr. Gray. And we have successfully removed all the negativity from that. And that's my word for you. When somebody tries to do you wrong, as long as you understand this is your season, God will remove the negative. God will remove all the haters. God will put you in a whole good level. So my ones got to live. And he said, you know what? You're back to five stars. So that's my word for somebody God will remove the negativity from your life, and when God removes the negativity, God will promote you and say, you know, you're nothing but five stars. Why? Because we serve a five-star God. Because this is your season. So from this day forward, September 5th, 2021, understand, this is your season. I double dare you to get on your social media page and say, this is my season. This is a new season for me. Call up all your hate and say thank you for hating on me because this is a new season. Because when you operate in your new season, you know 
but you're being led by God. You're being called by God. And I'm going to close on this scripture. And see, the Bible says, trust in the Lord yeah. with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And with that said, this is your duty. Come on, get God a hand. Amen, amen. Can we all stand? Can we all stand?